Hi, my name is John. My friend Janet just purchased a Celestron CGEM mount uh, and she wanted some help on how to uh, put it together. Uh, I don't necessarily endorse this brand, but it's one that suits her needs well. She wants to do some visual imaging and some tracking, uh, but they are complex mounts and they're a little bit more advanced. So I'm going to make a video on uh, how she should, should set it up. Uh, in addition, I figured this is something that I could put on Facebook. Uh, so let's get started. So one of the first things we need to do is to open up the tripod and then we need to stabilize it with this brace. The next thing we're going to want to do is put on the counterbalance weights up front. The reason being is you don't want to put on the telescope later and have it tip over because you felt you forgot to put on the weights. Now Janet, I had to add an extra two and a half pounds because the weight that came equipped with the mount uh, was underweighted. So you're going to have to get additional weight. The next thing you're going to want to do is to mount the telescope. You'll notice that there's two knobs right here. You want these facing you. In order for these to turn, there's a clutch mechanism here and you turn it counterclockwise. You can see it's easy to turn. So face the knobs towards you, towards the back. Lock in the clutch. You want to lift the telescope. Got a little handle here, and you match up the grooves with the grooves that are in here. It's a Lost Mandy tile uh, mount. Once it's in the grooves, you want to tighten it down. Put those knobs that are facing you. So you turn in a clockwise direction. <clears throat> now some people will actually start with the telescope in this direction. I don't recommend that because if this isn't tight enough, it'll slide off and backwards. So I always recommend it putting on sideways. The next thing you're going to want to do is to level your mount. Uh, it's going to be necessary for operation. So you can see right here there is a little uh, bubble uh, with the circle and, and the bubble is a little high. So what you do is you adjust the legs uh, to get that bubble into the center. So you'll see right here and in front I'm going to adjust these two uh, so that your mount is centered. So let's get to work on that. I'm done adjusting the legs to get the bubble in the center. So Janet, if you look now, the uh, bubble is in the center, which means this mount is level and is ready for operation. Okay, the next thing you're going to want to do is to balance the scope uh, on its ascension and declination axes. Uh, and the way you do this is, you know that we put the weights on earlier. So there's two clutches here, one for the ascension and one for the declination. So what we want to do is, uh, is to loosen the clutch, and you'll see that I'm able to swing the telescope freely. And you can see that the telescope is heavy on one side. It's heavy on, on the telescope side. So we simply just take the weights, and which we put on earlier, and we slide them outward just so that we get that balance. 
and then we'll tighten it see what happens and on that first try it seems pretty good okay the next thing we want to do so we swing it back to its starting position and we relock the clutch and pull towards you and up the next thing you want to do is to balance the scope and if you just put the scope on the side, you'll see that it, it appears to be ass heavy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to loosen these uh, handles. And I'm gonna push this telescope slightly forward. Oh, about right there. And just so you know, I put two lines here for those to line up. So I'm retightening down the telescope. Make sure it's tight, because you don't want this to slide off later. When I loosen this, well, it still appears to be a little heavy in the rear end, so I'm gonna move it up a little more. Maybe I need to go up a little bit more. This is always a process. And we're almost there. As you can see, since I've let go of it, since I've let go of it, uh, it's pretty good on both axes. So now we're nice and level. Put it back and lock it. The next thing you're going to want to do is to polar align the scope. So that helps the telescope know where it is when you turn it on and which direction it's pointing. So. Uh, what astronomers usually do is they take the telescope, the counterweights, and this front leg, and they all have a point at the North Star, uh, and that helps with the alignment. That makes things a whole lot easier. Uh, if you get to a field and everybody's telescopes are facing in one direction, you know that you should be doing the same thing. Um, what you need to do to find the North Star is you need to set the latitude. Uh, so what a lot of people do is they download a GPS app uh, and that, that, that shows you the latitude and longitude. Uh, they're very inexpensive, so, I mean, most are free. In fact, the one that I downloaded is free. Um, but I already know that we're at a latitude of 39 degrees where I live, so what you do is this. To set your latitude, there is a latitude scale right here. And the way that you adjust that is you uh, Loosen the tension knob, which is right here in front, and it's, it's already loose for the demonstration. Back here, you turn this knob, and you'll notice that the uh, latitude on the scale is moving up and down. Okay, so right there, it's at about 40, uh, and I know that I need to come down to about 39, which is perfect. Next, we need to make sure we're absolutely uh, looking at the North Star just before we turn on the uh, mount. Now mind you, once you do this once at your house, you probably won't need to do it again because you're not going to touch the latitude and you're going to point it in the same direction as before. So really, you'll need to do this on your very first setup and then you need to do some tweaking uh, every time you take it out. Uh, so one of the things you need to do is to remove uh, the cover for what's called the polar alignment scope. Then there's a lid right there. Take that off. There it is. And you look through here, and you will be able to see uh, what's Cassiopeia, uh, Polaris, and uh, which is the North Star, and the Big Dipper. Now, you'll come to find out that Polaris is not always in the center where, where you'll see an X. You will see an X through here. You won't have, if you want to, you can turn this and focus. But you look through here, 
and you find Polaris. And then that's again where you do some of your fine tuning with, with uh, the latitude knob. You get it in here, you take it up and down until Polaris is running the center of the X. Then you lock it down. And you may come to the realization that you need to go left and right in which you're loosing these knobs and turning the scope a little bit in each direction. If you have trouble, you can just move them out just a little bit, uh, but you should be okay. Once you're done aligning your scope with the North Star, or Polaris as we call it, uh, you're going to want to adjust your finder scope so that it is also looking at Polaris. You actually want to slave your finder scope to the larger scope. And you do that by adjusting these knobs right here. You can see them. And once Polaris, or the North Star, is centered in here, it should also be centered in your main eyepiece. Now that's going to come in very handy when you're aligning your scope and you're trying to find objects because this is a much wider field of view and sometimes you can't find what you're looking for through this uh, tight focus. So what you want to do is find your object here first and then you center it and then we already know that it is slave to the larger eyepiece and telescope. So you find something in here first and then it should be centered in your eyepiece. Once you've polar aligned your scope, put the polar alignment uh, scope cap back on. And then put the front cap back on. At this point, we are ready to power on the scope. I'm going to use a standard cigarette lighter 12 volt battery connector. Uh, Instead of bringing my truck all the way back here, I'm just going to use a die-hard 12-volt battery uh, that you can get at any Sears. It doesn't have to be this brand. It's anything that provides 12-volt uh, DC output. Then you take the other end of the connector and you plug it into the power cord. On the other side of the scope. So this house is how we plug in the power. Turn it until it locks. Next we get the hand controller. And we grab its end, we put its end into the hand controller port. As simple as that. At this point, turn on your mount. This is where you will need your mobile phone handy. So right away it says uh, press enter to begin alignment. Okay, uh, set index, uh, and to set both of the index marks. What that's talking about is this. Make sure that this line, if you can see it or not, is, a tat, is pointing, is aligned with this notch, and that this one, this blue one here, is aligned with this notch. Hit enter. This is where you key in your time. Now, right now I'm going to make this uh, 9.30, so it's in 24-hour time, so 21.30. I understand that it's 4:30, uh, but um, you know it's not dark yet. So we're going to, in essence, lie to the machine. Hit enter. Uh, daylight savings time. Yes. Uh, this is where you key in the uh, uh, date. So June 4th. So the date's already correct. June 4th, uh, uh, 2017. Hit enter. Now at this point, it asks for two-star alignment, but I recommend you hit back. And then it comes up with custom site and you hit enter. This is where you use your GPS app on your phone uh, to get your uh, latitude and longitude. Uh, so you would key it in here and you, you know, go back and forth and you use the numbers. And in this sense, I'm going to use the uh, longitude it's got right now. Is it west? Yes, in this case. And then we do the same thing with the latitude. We already know it's 39 degrees. Enter north, yes. Eastern USA, yes. And then that's the time, enter. Daylight savings, yes. Time date again, and then two star alignment, yes. Enter. In this case, it wants to go to Pollux for its first star to do its alignment. Hit enter. Choose whatever default star it comes up with. And you'll see that the telescope begins to move towards where it believes that Pollux is. It's slewing. Then I want you to use the direction uh, uh, arrows 
to uh, center Pollux in your viewfinder. So would you look in your eyepiece and you would see a star, which is probably Pollux, and you center it using the, uh, the arrows, and then you'd hit enter, hit center it again to make sure it's centered in your eyepiece, hit align, it'll ask for a second star, in this case it's Regulus, hit enter, and it's gonna slew to what it believes is reg Regulus. Once again, as it believes it's centering on Regulus, it won't be perfect. What you're going to realize you need to do is, again, to use the direction arrows as you look through the eyepiece to get it perfectly centered. It'll be a little off, but just keep uh, working the arrow keys till you center it. Uh, when you're done, it says hit Enter, and then hit Align. Uh, do I want to add a calibration star? In this case, no. Hit the back key, and you're ready to begin. It says it's ready. What you would do next is do something like uh, solar system, and you, you see Mars is in the display, and you can go down to uh, Jupiter. Let's choose Jupiter and hit enter. And now the mount is going to, and will remain tracking Jupiter for the next few hours. And with that, Janet, I believe you have a good start. All right, you take care. Bye-bye.